Today I'm going to show you how to build one of these. Now this booster is quite unique because it doesn't need any power to operate. And if you're a little nervous about working around power, this could be a really, really cool first project for you. Now I can hear some people out there saying this must be some sort of trick. You can't make a booster that doesn't require any power. Now this is not a trick, this is a real deal booster. You just got to keep watching, I'll show you how it all works. And that's the bypass sound. Okay, so I've got a couple of pedals here. Now this smaller one, this is the Golden Gizmo version one. This is what we're gonna be building today. I'm gonna to show you step by step how to get this one up and running. This is the Golden Gizmo version too. It's a little bigger, it's got a more powerful engine. It's got a little bit of EQing that I've done to it. Plus it's got this little overdrive switch here, all still without using any power, which is pretty incredible. If you wanna build this one, I do have a schematic on our side. It's a little trickier than the Golden Gizmo version one. And I also have these pedals available as well if you want those. So just check the links in the description. But anyway, today is all about this one here, but I will do demos of both of these later on in the video, but please keep watching. There's a whole bunch of important information you need to know while building these pedals. So if you wanna make a real deal, genuine boost that doesn't require any power, you have to make a trade. So in this case, we're gonna be trading some frequency bandwidth for voltage gain. So what it means is we're trading some of the frequency range that a guitar can produce in exchange for making the signal stronger or louder. And this is also what gives this such a great character. So to do this, we're gonna need a small signal transformer and the 42 TL019 is a really common transformer. It's really low cost and it actually works really well for this application. All right, so what are we gonna need? We're gonna need an enclosure. So I use a 1590B style enclosure. Um, you can use anything that's metal really, is even like a cake tin or something like that. But uh, 1590B is a good size. Uh, a big cool looking knob. You're gonna need a pot, a one meg linear taper pot. You're gonna need a couple of jacks. So the jacks uh, that I'm using are a couple of Switchcraft mono jacks. The next thing is the switch. So you can use sort of fancy switches like these DeMont ones, or you probably find these typical sort of blue style ones um, all over the show. I'm gonna use um, this one today because I've got loads and loads of these Taiwei ones which are really, really good. And the all important transformer. Then you're gonna need wire and you're gonna need solder, the usual sort of stuff to build a pedal. So let's get cracking into drilling this enclosure. All right, first I like to tape, shove a bit of tape down the center, like this. And then we're just gonna measure, or we're we'll gonna draw a center line. Just easier to work Sorry, I've got something in my mouth. It's easier to work from a center line. If you don't tape it, it can sort of stain the powder coat. So, right, we're gonna go 30 down, 30 millimeters down from the top, and we'll sort of go 20 up from the bottom. Right about, and then we're gonna dot punch them. So that just stops your drill from slipping. All right, this is the, the knob end up here, so, we're gonna put the jacks at this end. So what I like to do is measure in from each one of these, 10, I keep putting that lid in my mouth, 10 millimeters in. I've lost my little mini ruler, so it's like super annoying to do. And then we're gonna measure 12 mil down. Cool, so there we go, so that is 10 mil in, each side from those and then 12 mil up from the bottom. And I'm gonna dot punch those and then we're gonna drill them out. So what I've done is I've drilled all those spots out to three millimeters, it's our pilot hole. So that's gonna be a hole for our main drills to follow. And then we've got a 12 millimeter hole for our switch, a seven millimeter hole for the pot and 9.5 millimeter holes for the jacks. Now, always start with your smallest hole because if something goes wrong and you mess something up, then at least you can fix it. If you start with the biggest hole first, and you can't really make a bigger hole smaller. So always go that way around. You can also use a step bit if you want, but I find they can drift a little bit. It's not too bad on a drill press. And if you're doing lots and lots of boxes, it's just so easy to mess up um, if you're using a step a bit. So I, st I tend to just stick with just standard drill bits, pilot holes in the size I want. So once they're drilled out, then we're just gonna mount all our parts into the enclosure. Next, we wanna mount the transformer. Now. You'll notice the transformer has a P on one side and nothing on the other. Now P is that primary side of the transformer. That's the side you'd normally wire everything into first, but the trick to make it into a booster is that we're actually gonna wire it in backwards. So we want 
the P side of the transformer to be facing the pot, P to the pot. Now what I like to do is I like to put a little bit of adhesive foam, and if you can catch that there, on the underside of the transformer. So I'll just peel off that protective layer. Okay, cool, got it off, it's really hard to get off. Now remember, P goes towards the pot, and I like to mount it right next to the switch right here, as close as I can. And it will just stick there nicely. Now next, I uh, put a cable tie around the transformer and the switch. Awesome, so that is actually pretty secure now. That's not gonna really go anywhere. It just keeps that transformer nice and safe. Next, uh, we're gonna wire this one up. First, snip off those little center, the center taps from the transformer. That's the wire coming up from the middle. There's three wires each side. Snip off the middle ones, we don't need those. Let's get rid of them. And this is our signal, it's going to flow down into the switch, out from the switch, through the transformer, into the pot, from the pot back into the switch, and then it will be switched back out to the output jack. What I'll do is I'll wire this all up and then we'll come back and I'll show you what I did. So it's all wired up now and ready to go. Now I'm just going to run through exactly what I have done here. So if we look at the switch first, okay, so you've got nine lugs. The two outer bottom lugs I have wired together. Okay, so that's for the true bypass switching. Okay, this next lug up on this side, this one here, this comes from the input jack here, the hot lug on the input jack. The next one up here is connected directly to that transformer, one of the legs of the transformer. Okay, now if we go to the center lugs, none of the center lugs have anything soldered to them. It, it doesn't matter because we're not using an LED because there's no power going to this box. Um, it doesn't even matter if this wire, of, it's probably touching that center lug, it doesn't even matter. It's not going to make any difference. So on this far side, obviously, we've got the joining wire to this side. The next one up is the wire that connects to the output hot lug on the output jack. And then here, the next one up here, this is from the center lug of the pot, so the output lug of that pot. Now if I move to the transformer, obviously this side of the transformer is going to this part of the switch. Now this side of the transformer, I call this the output side, remember this is the primary side of the transformer, we're actually wiring to the secondary side. That goes to the pot, that goes to the input lug of the pot. On the other side of the transformer, the two legs that you've got here, they get soldered together and then a wire goes from those two uh, legs that are soldered together down to the pot and it gets soldered to this lug on the pot. Now this lug gets soldered to ground up here on, I've soldered it to the output lug. The jacks up here, obviously the wires go to the switches that I showed you before and one of the wires gets soldered to ground. Now because I use internal tooth locking washers on the jacks, it bites into the jack and into the enclosure, so the grounds on the two uh, jacks are actually linked through the enclosure, so I don't need a wire. If you're not using locking washers like this, you are gonna, it's safer to have a wire going between them because if they get loose, you're gonna lose ground on one side, you're gonna get buzzing and lots of noise problems and stuff like that. The next step is to put the bottom part of the enclosure on. Just like in that last video, you're gonna use like a quarter inch drill or a six millimeter or 6.5, something like that, to take off some of this powder coat here and these countersunk pieces because if you don't, this bottom plate is not grounded and it can let a lot of noise in. So you wanna take a little bit, scrape a bit off there and scrape a bit off another section as well and then you put this bottom plate on and then we're going to put all the knobs on and she will be ready to rock and roll. So now it's all up and running, here's the interesting bit and it's actually quite important. So you know how I said earlier we're trading frequency bandwidth for voltage gain and we're trading those, that frequency range for some extra volume, essentially, right? So for this pedal to actually provide a boost, we need a signal coming in that's really strong and really healthy. So just say you're running it with an acoustic guitar with a pickup, like a Fishman pickup. Absolutely fine, just plug it straight in, it's gonna work perfectly. If you're running it with a active guitar with EMG pickups, something like that, it's gonna work perfectly as well, or even an active bass. Now if you want to use this with a traditional guitar like a Strat or a Les Paul, it's still not a problem, it's just you need to know that the signal coming from those guitars isn't ultra strong, it's not ultra healthy. But all you need to do is put this on your board straight after 
any pedal that's got a buffered bypass, like a Boss pedal, any Boss pedal, Digitech, Electronics. Um, there's so many different tuners that have buffered bypass, and that will strengthen that signal. It won't make it louder, it just gives it more current drive, get, making it stronger and healthier, so there's more frequency bandwidth to draw from to create that boost. So it's actually a pretty easy add to your pedal board since it doesn't actually need any power, it just has to nip in straight after one of those pedals. I'll explain how this works. So I'm plugging straight into the Golden Gizmo, the version one here, and that's the bypass sound. Now, because I'm not running sort of any buffer in front of it, what happens if you turn it on, you pretty much just don't get anything, okay? And that is definitely a problem. So. Now what I've done this time is I've put a bad monkey in front of it. Now Digitech actually put pretty awesome quality buffers in their pedals so they give a really strong, really healthy signal. And which is great because if you're using a pedal like these Golden Gizmos, there's a lot there to work with. So here's the bypass sound. And this is the boosted sound. So at the moment we're on about three quarters, if I go to full. So it's actually not a bad amount of boost there. One thing that you can do if you want to strengthen the boost in this is to is to stack two of those transformers. I'll just show you on screen now. If you wire them, if you wire them like this, they'll be stacked and it, while it won't be that much louder, you'll definitely get a little bit more low end and it will just work a little nicer with certain pedals. So I'll show you what I mean. So if we try this with a buffered bypass pedal that maybe doesn't have such good buffers like um, like an older Boss pedal. So let's grab one of those. So I've got this Boss OD1 here and the buffers in this one are pretty traditional for Boss, this, the buffered bypass that they use is transistor based. Now this is the bypass now. <laughs> So if I put that on about three quarters again, it's actually a pretty cool tone that you get while when using different buffers. It almost transforms the booster into something new each time. On full, there's definitely a decent amount of boost. But as you can see, it works quite differently than using it with a bad monkey. Now, that is not so much of an issue with the Golden Gizmo version 2. It has a more powerful transformer in there. That's why I can add an overdrive circuit because it's got the extra juice to drive one of those circuits. But using different buffers will yield a different sort of type of boost, which I think is really, really cool. It means you've got um, sort of multiple different pedals depending on what you pair it with, which is pretty awesome. I really like the nasally um, boosted sound that you get when you're using one of these Boss pedals with this, um, with this booster. So now I've got the version 2 here um, paired with this Bad Monkey buffer. And that's the bypass sound. You can sort of see it's a lot fuller in those lows, and that's only about half, so that's already boosting. I'm gonna put it back to the back. So you can see there it's got quite a lot of drive to push amps and things like that. If I add that overdrive circuit in, See, it cuts a lot of that volume um, because we're actually using a lot of that extra strength of the signal to create the overdrive sound. If I put that in about three quarters. Oh, if I move it to front pickup. Um, I really like this booster. I like the fact that it doesn't use any power. You can just chuck it anywhere in your signal chain. The overdrive's actually pretty good. It's actually crazy how much it boosts. So let me pair it with that Boss pedal again. You'll see this time it'll do the same thing. A little bit more of that low end will be retained. But like I said, if you 
feel like you need a bit more low end, just stack two of those transformers together in that version one and it will definitely beef up that low end. Um, not giving you any extra real output volume, but definitely a beefier tone. <laughs> I really like that sound, that's actually a really good sound. How much juice we got? Quite a lot by the looks. Yeah, really cool. Really, really cool. It totally actually kind of freaks me out when I plug these in, how, how good they actually sound and there's no power going to them. So it's 100% possible to build something really good that doesn't require power. What about the overdrive setting? Oh, we're gonna have to have that up pretty high. It's a really nice sounding boost and actually really, really simple to build. So something really cool. Let me just show you with bass on this version too with the overdrive sound on. It sounds really cool, hold on. Bass is obviously active so I don't need any. But check this out, man. Man, I really hope you guys have a crack at this. If you've never tried to build something from scratch like this, like a DIY build, this is probably one of the easiest things you're gonna have a go at. Plus there's no risk, you can't wreck anything, you can't short anything out, you can't smoke anything or damage any of your gear, um, you can't damage yourself. So I reckon you should massively have a go at this. It's a really, really fun build. I hope you enjoyed the sound of this one. I hope you really liked what this V2 can do. If you want something that's a bit grunty and a bit louder, definitely check this one out. It's actually a really, really cool pedal. Anyway, guys, hope you have fun building that one, and we'll catch you next time.